Good morning. Welcome to you all and welcome to our worship service for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost for November 8th. Um, just a couple of announcements. We continue to have our midweek service on uh, Wednesday evenings. That's, good, that's at about 7.15 now. We also continue to worship indoors on Sunday mornings and you can find that service on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. We also uh, present this service on our Facebook page and our website on Sunday mornings. Please stand, let us begin our service with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Our hymn is Here I Here I Am.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the fifth chapter of the book of the prophet Amos. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear. Or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was wit- was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not, not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, despise your festivals and take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm is Psalm 70. We read it responsively. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. That those who seek my life be put to shame and confound me. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. This is our psalm. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. The Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Here ends the second reading. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
that all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. The wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. The kingdom of heaven will be like this, Jesus says. Jesus is often telling parables about the kingdom of heaven, or as he usually says in Mark and Luke, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will be like this. And then he tells a story to show us what it's going to be like. Jesus never actually explains it in well the way you the way you would teach something in a class. He tells stories so we can start to understand and see the kind of world that Jesus is talking about. The kingdom of God is like this. The story is meant to help us understand what Jesus is getting at. When Jesus first comes back from his journey in the wilderness, fasting and being tempted. He starts to preach and he says, repent, believe the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God has come close to us. It's here and all around us. And what Jesus does is he starts to live out the kingdom of God. He goes from town to town, from village to village, and he teaches people. When people are sick, Jesus heals them. When people are hungry, he feeds them. He welcomes sinners and eats with them. He accepts invitations to the homes of Pharisees and eats with them. And he's living out the kingdom of God here and now because as Jesus says the kingdom of God has come near so when Jesus tells these parables about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven he's talking about what it means for God to be present in our world and for us to live as a part of God's activity in the world here and now When I read a parable like the one we have today about the bridesmaids, the way I grew up hearing these parables, and the way I still kind of want to hear them when I first think of them or read them, is to think of the kingdom of heaven being about, well, heaven, about life after death. And five of the bridesmaids get into heaven and five are left out. And so it's somehow about our eternal salvation. But the more I've read Jesus' parables and studied the Gospels, the more I see that Jesus is talking about us here and now. About how we live our lives now. About how we participate in God's kingdom now. And there are the ten bridesmaids who are waiting for the bridegroom to come. 
and it takes a long time. The bridegroom is delayed and they wait and they fall asleep. Then they hear the shout, the bridegroom's on the way. So they get up and they take care of their lamps and five of them find they don't have enough oil. And when the doors are open for the wedding banquet, the five with enough oil go in and the other five are left behind. They're left out. And I think this is about not whether we get into heaven when we die, but it's about how well we are prepared to live in the kingdom of God here and now. And so there's something we can do about this. I found back when I was in seminary that the more I grew in my faith, the less I was concerned about what would happen to me when I die. That my faith wasn't about going to heaven or hell. Because I guess as I grew in my faith, I found that when I die, I trust God to take care of me. And I don't have to worry about that. So what I do have to worry about is how I live my life here and now. How I participate in God's kingdom in my own life. And that's what we each can take care of. That's what we each have control over. How do we live our lives now? Are we like the five wise bridesmaids who have enough oil in their lamp? Or like the five foolish wise maids who don't have enough oil? And what, what's the oil anyways? Having the wise and the foolish reminds me of the, the the um, Sermon on the Mount earlier in Matthew's Gospel, where it's the wise man who builds his house on the rock and the foolish man who builds his house on the sand. So having enough oil is like being on the rock. Not having enough oil is like building on the sand. There Jesus talks about those who hear my words and do them are like the wise man. I think those who have enough oil, in a sense, are like the wise man. They hear Jesus' words and do them. In their life, they do the things that build up their faith. They do the things that help them to participate in God's kingdom. They They've grown in their trust of God. And the advantage of that is that in all of our lives, there come times of challenge and trouble. St. Paul says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Have you ever had someone die in your life? We've all had loved ones die and will again. But as Christians, as people who've lived out our faith and practiced our faith, we do not grieve as those who have no hope, as those who have no oil, but we grieve as those who do have hope. So in the face of death, our grief is mixed. It's mixed with a joy, with with a kind of hope. 
It's mixed with seeing beyond death and into the resurrection of the dead. And knowing that death does not have the last word. Because we have spent our lives in the faith and grown in the faith. And so our lamps are full of oil. And the bridesmaids who don't have the oil in their lamp. I think are like people who, in the face of tragedy, in the face of death, have nothing else to hold on to. When death comes into their lives, there's no hope beyond death or beyond this life. And so they grieve, as St. Paul says, as those who, who have no hope. Because they don't see beyond this life. We're called to keep awake, to be like those wise bridesmaids, like that wise man who builds on the rock and not on the sand, to nurture our life of faith through prayer, through scripture, through the singing of hymns through worship and fellowship with one another, through service to God and God's people, through practicing our faith in all the ways that we're called to practice it. To be like the wise bridesmaids. Continue to fill your lamp with oil it's been a little bit more difficult this year with not being able to worship together and fellowship with one another the way we have. So if your lamp is running low, if you find that your hope is not what it was, that your sense of God is not what it once was, Return to the practices that restore your lamp, and restore your faith, and restore your hope in the promise of Jesus Christ, of his love and mercy for us, the assurance that he will be with us always. Keep awake. Jesus is with us, and Jesus is coming to us. He will never leave us. Amen. Our hymn is Blessed Assurance.
Please stand. Let us confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, artists, who work, whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land and the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O God. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn, all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds both physical and mental experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives. Inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your th throne, will you, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. We give thanks to all of our members who have continued to support our congregation through your offerings. Offerings can be mailed into the church office. You can also give online uh, through the Give Plus app or through electronic uh, transfer and the Simply Giving program. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Our hymn is Lord of all hope. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.